two minute video where we show how to set it and then. Okay, so we're gonna start with this? Yeah, um, no, with just the, so they know how you got there. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. One other item that we need to set in our options before we start scheduling is we need to set all of our tasks to be effort driven. So your new tasks are effort driven. Okay, how did you get there again? Okay, so I went to the options again, file, options, schedule, and new tasks are effort driven. Okay. So we go back to our schedule and we've gotten our costs in line by deleting, or not deleting, by inactivating one line in our schedule. Okay. And we need to shorten this by five days. So what we're gonna do is add more resources to a task. So crash the project? Mm -hmm. So if you have one resource working on this task and it takes $2,500 or I want to turn it back to the work here. I magically snuck over there. Hmm. So I want to turn this over to the work so I can see how much works on this task. Okay. So Joe is actually working 64 hours on here. I want to split this between two people. It's a task that can be done by two people and I can shorten it by five days. Okay. So by just adding another resource here, and I'm gonna add Carl. Now notice when I press OK, the work will turn to 3232. That's that software scheduling engine. Hmm. Voila. And my days turned to five, and I decreased the work by five days. It was 10, and now it's five. So when I did that, I need to take these predecessors and successors out of this deleted task and make sure that my little kids aren't lost because it didn't roll up to my top when I shortened those days and it should have. Mm -hmm. So I wanna make sure that this milestone goes back to four instead of five and that shortened my days here, or it lengthened my days because I didn't have my stuff together. Right. Oh, okay. So now it's all together. So now it's all together. But we wanna be very careful and make sure everything's linked because you saw a problem with that when I, when I took this task out, that it wasn't linked correctly. So now it is and we know that is a dead task. So rule of thumb, delete your successors and predecessors there so you can see the holes that it's leaving. Otherwise, you won't have the date right when your project's completing. Mm -hmm. That's very important. So that one, task three, let's say it's inactive. Why not delete it? You can, and that's how I like it. And since we're just starting the schedule, I would okay. suggest to, to, to delete it. But if you're in the middle of the schedule and trying to crash the schedule and make sure that you get done on time mm -hmm. and on budget and you're taking out stuff, okay. you might want a history of what you took out. Right. So right. we took out detailed task three to make budget. Okay. So for this particular instance, since we're in the middle of estimating the project in the beginning, let's go ahead and delete that task. It makes the cleaner schedule. Mm -hmm. And then another way that you could do, it's dependent on how your company has it set up or your rules for scheduling, is those, excuse me, those inactive tasks could go down at the bottom and you could always see what ones you took out. Just make sure your predecessors and successors are not still on that. Okay. Because it'll screw up your path in your schedule. Okay, so we've, sh we've uh, shortened the days there. We're ready to baseline. The reason we baseline is we want to see where we were, where we're going, what we're doing. So let's baseline. I like to baseline, and I, I do project because it's the project baseline. So projects set baseline. 
I want to set my first baseline, which is baseline. Okay. There's 10 baselines in project. Mm -hmm. I use the first three, baseline, baseline one, and baseline two, because they match my reports I'm going to show you. So I want to baseline my one. I want to baseline my baseline one. I just pull this down and baseline it. And it always gives you when you last saved that baseline. I'll show you here. So you can see when that last baseline was saved. My baseline one is my sacred baseline. No one ever touches it. That's your baseline that you could always go back to when you did this estimating for your project. Baseline two, I'm gonna baseline it. It's baselined every time you status the schedule so you can see what changed from time to time to time. And then you can have those other baselines for whatever purpose you want. It's dependent and, and it's good to have rules on what baselines you're using. Otherwise you don't know. And in a company, it's good to have scheduling rules. Right, same set of rules for all PMs or schedulers. Now let's say something, you added a new task. Well, first of all, you gotta put in your predecessors again. They're gonna do this the same time. They're gonna do the one ahead of it. And we're gonna add. Task. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and we're gonna add a resource of John. And they're just gonna do that at the same time. So it added money, but I didn't add, and I'm gonna have two days. It didn't add any time because these are done at the same time. Okay. So these are, yeah, so they're all linked correctly. 